Hi, my name is Bernie Maloney of Powered by Teams, an Agile consultancy based in Silicon Valley here with another episode of Agile 5x5, a series of videos where we give you hints on Agile topics, hopefully in five minutes or less. Today's topic is greater engagement in your meetings and events, particularly retrospectives. This came up a couple of different ways for me in the past week, which was a clue that maybe shooting this video would be a good idea. One way was I had a colleague who was offering an in-person course and wanted some ways to increase some engagement in the course. So I shared one of the ideas that I'm about to share with you. Um, another way was one of my clients was asking me, how do they get greater engagement from their team members in a retrospective that the team members are kind of holding back? And that's kind of the big inspiration here for this video. So I wanna give you some ideas about facilitation in retrospectives. So first thing, uh, people don't hate meetings. They hate bad meetings. And it's really easy to do meetings poorly. So getting some skills in facilitation can really help. Um, now, first thing to check is, do people understand the purpose of the meeting that you're having? So every one of the events in Scrum has a purpose. For the retrospective, it's to look for ways to increase quality and effectiveness of the team's work. Now, uh, another thing to check for about retrospectives in particular and people not wanting to participate is if nothing changes, if the team surfaces problems in a retrospective but the organization doesn't change, that's going to depress people. They're going to see it as completely futile to go through this stuff because nothing changes. So one of the things you want to do is if your team is surfacing some blockers or impediments, build a backlog of them. You don't have to address all of them all at once. Figure out what the most important thing was and work with leadership on getting that removed for your team. When your team starts seeing change occur, that's going to lead to a little bit greater engagement, particularly in retrospectives, because they're going to see that these things actually improve their life and work. Now, another thing to check for is psychological safety. Sometimes people don't participate because they don't feel safe in that environment. And that's where I want to give you a couple of ideas here um, to help address that in particular. So um, these ideas come out of uh, therapy where uh, you what you want to do is you want to externalize the problem. Um, it's called dissociation, where you dissociate the individual from the situation. Now, you've seen this with kids, like in therapy, you may have heard of kids like having a sock puppet and they're talking to the sock puppet about the situation. That's dissociation. An easy way to do that, like with adults, is with just pen and paper. People usually have that around. And you can have them just draw a sketch that represents the sprint maybe that you're doing a retrospective on. Now, an easy way to do that is just have them draw a smiley face that represents whatever that was. That's kind of what I was sketching there in the background. And then everybody shows it to the camera at the same time in a simultaneous reveal. And then people explain what their sketch means. And sketching a smiley face is really simple. Some people will hesitate to sketch because they don't feel like they're artists and that's gonna decrease their psychological safety. So if you do it everybody and just something as simple as a smiley face, that can increase your engagement as well as invoke that dissociation to be able to have people talk about what that situation was. Another one of my favorite techniques, now this is the one that I shared for the in-person um, situation. You can even do this remotely because this is a six brick Lego kit that you can use for a lot of facilitation. I'm gonna give you a reference that gives you a whole bunch of different ideas that you can use with just these six bricks. Um, the book is called What the Duck? Because with these six bricks, you can build a duck out of Legos, which is kind of what I'm doing here in the background. Um, now, by building a sculpture, this is another way of doing dissociation so that people can kind of talk about the situation. A six brick Lego kit, they're not expensive. You can order them off of eBay or Amazon for eight to ten dollars and even have them delivered to your remote team. Or like I buy these in bulk for when I do in-person events and use it that way. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do just with Legos and sculptures and have somebody build what represents for them the sprint or whatever you're talking about. And now they can dissociate by talking about the sculpture rather than directly to people. Now, those ideas from that um, six brick Lego kit come out of this book, Strategic Play, What the Duck. Um, you can find this on Amazon. I don't get any referral fees for this. Another really good thing came up out of my colleague's 
offering that in an in-person and showing um, the little kit, uh, Sven Peter Ekebus commented on his post on LinkedIn and said, hey, are you using minimum viable doc, which I'd never heard about before. So I want to give Sven a plug here. Sven Peter, if I got your name wrong, please forgive me. I'm trying. So um, it's bit.ly slash minimum dash viable dash duck. And what Sven Peter has here is a bunch of different things that you can do with that six brick Lego kit to illustrate the whole concept of minimum viable product, which I thought was excellent. Okay, so um, getting dissociated through sketches or sculptures is one of the ways that you can increase engagement in your retrospectives. Another way is to have more creative retrospectives. There's a classic book by Esther Derby and Diana Larson's Agile Retrospectives. They're coming out with a second edition of it. When they wrote the first edition, they it inspired Karina Balduff so much that Karina took a bunch of the ideas that Esther and Diana had captured and put them into something that's called Retromat. Now, Esther and Diana outlined five different phases for retrospectives. Notice that there's five numbers that I've just highlighted here. Watch what happens when I click the wheel, five different numbers. What Karina did is she put them into a giant slot machine so that randomly it will pull these ideas together and give you a whole facilitation plan for a retrospective. If there's one of the ideas that you don't like or you feel is impractical, there's a link at the top of that phase and you can click on it and it'll give you all of the ideas for that phase. Some of them even have examples that you can take a look at if you're looking for figuring out how that works. Now, um, on top of that, Karina has captured all of these into a mural board that you can use for facilitation that she sells. And again, I don't get any referral fees from this. I just think it's excellent work, so I wanted to plug these folks. So that gives you all um, several different ideas that you can use to increase engagement in your meetings and events. Uh, if people are psychologically not feeling all that safe, you can use the technique of dissociation through a sketch or a sculpture. Okay, And if you're looking for creative ideas, you can go to something like Retromat for ideas for having more engaging meetings. If you'd like more ideas like this, I'd love to stay in touch with you. You can do that through the QR code that's down over here or the URL that's under it of poweredbyteams.com slash contact. I do hope to be of service to y'all at some point in the future. If you liked this video, please like, subscribe, and share to this series of videos on the Powered by Teams YouTube channel. Until that next video, be well, stay vibrant, and thank you.